grad, class of 87, sixth season with the Flyers, 117 and 60. Well, Dayton Ro has dominated the series in recent years. Roberts, I had a Bonnie alum text me today, said, where else would you want to be on a Saturday night mm. than at than at the Riley Center, and I agree. This is going to be a fun one. It's an electric atmosphere. The students showed up 90 minutes before the game. They were heckling people, being college kids, and it should be a great atmosphere this evening. Dayton with the ball first after winning the tip. Our officials, Dwayne Gladden, Michael Lucky, and Trey Stions. They dump it inside for Holmes. Patience with three on the shot clock. Three pointers up off the back iron. Rebounded by Kamara. He missed the putback. He tips it up and in. Yeah, that's what Dayton does best. They stay <laughs> on the attack mode on the glass. Bonnie's doubled on the post. They rotated out but didn't block out on the on, after the first shot. Players to look for for St. Bonaventure. Daryl Banks, the leading scorer. Jan Farrell has been on a tear, as has Moses Flowers. And Chad Venning, the big man in the middle, will really have a big task guarding Holmes. Benning has been playing better as of late, kind of getting himself an in-season shape as the season progresses, and he's been aggressive offensively as well. Dayton will start a different player tonight. Mustafa Amsil replaces R.J. Blakeney, who's out with a knee injury. Blakeney's their best defender. This is a wide-open Amsil, buries the three. Well, you can't get caught ball-watching when Malachi Smith drives that baseline because he's not trying to score. He's got his head up. He's looking for the open man. You talked about the injury issues Dayton had. Snake bitten by injuries to their backcourt. Malachi Smith, Kobe Elvis, and Kobe Brea all healthy, all playing, and they're starting to hit their stride. Jumpers up and in for Moses Flowers. Now Flowers just recently inserted in the starting lineup. He used to be a starter. He was a starter at Hartford. He's a smooth guard who can make things happen off the bounce. Third straight game he's been in the starting lineup, averaging eight points a game this season. Kamara soars to the rim. Couldn't get the roll. Rebounded by Banks. Bonnie's in the white jerseys on the run. Banks nifty move down the lane. Kicks it out. And a step back. Thought about a three, and now they'll think better of it and set up the offense. Well, good decision by Banks. The length of Dayton is problematic, but not for that guy, Tyrell Luke. He has really struggled of late, shooting just 18% over his last four games. Good start for Luke the reigning Patriot League Rookie of the Year at Holy Cross. I like this matchup. Luke and Smith at the top. This is Malachi Smith down the lane, leaves it up and in. That's on St. Bonaventure light. But Smith get all the way to the hole. They just found a little crack and a little seam to find an angle to the rim. No jabs here. Both teams coming out swinging. They're very confident, both clubs right now, in the way they're playing. Luke, another three. He got it. Well, Mark Schmidt's got a famous, very thick playbook. He's had to trim it down a little bit this year because of all the newbies, but did a good job on that one. Moving the ball from side to side, a little pin down screen. Kobe Elvis down the lane. Scoops it off glass. Rebounded by Chad Benning. Bonnie's on the run again with Kyrell Luke. An issue for the Bonnies, making sure they get up on the glass. They're not a great rebounding team. They lack the size of Dayton. Dayton is the best rebounding team in the league by, by margin. Tough shot is good. Moses Flowers. Now Flowers is listed at 6'3". Looks about six foot to me up close and personally, but he plays bigger than that because he can find a way to create an angle on the step back. Bonnies four out of five from the field to start the game. They've made four in a row. Elvis down the lane. Short pass for Kamara. Scores and a foul. Well, we all know about Dayton's length. And Kamara there does a nice job of sliding into the open area as his man had to help out on the dribble drive. But that's what St. Bonaventure has to do. They have to do a better job of containing dribble penetration. And that one, Kobe Elvis just kind of knifed his way into the paint. The help probably wasn't needed. to stay home, make him take a difficult two. Kamara, who comes off a career-high 31 points in their win in overtime against Loyola on Tuesday, averaging 13.5 and, and leads the Atlantic 10 at nine rebounds a game. Got five here early. Venning, right elbow jumper. Well, they're used to seeing ben Venning down low, kind of powering his way to the rim, but that time, nice little soft touch, stepping out, found some face. 
What a start offensively for both teams. And Dayton is the best team in the league in terms of points allowed and field goal percentage defense. St. Bonaventure shredding it so far. Good job contesting on seal on the perimeter. Building a wall on the blockouts. Deep three, Flowers, and it's rebounded by Kamara. I'm not sure Mark Schmidt has that one in his thick playbook, but a little heat check there. Flowers was feeling it. Elvis the three. Rebounded by Kamara. Kicks it out for a Malachi Smith three. Got the roll. Malachi Smith, not a three-point shooter, but wide open, took his time, got his feet set. And the guards for St. Bonaventure have to get involved with the rebounding in this game tonight because the length up front is overpowering for Dayton. Tremendous tempo and offense for this game so far. Luke, tough fadeaway jumper. And the rebound saved inbounds by the Flyers. Kamara off the pick and roll. He's fouled. First 100, coach. Well, Cairo Luke says we can get 100 easy. And they better not give up 100, though, because Dave's feeling it, too. Luke came out on fire. That stretch and shooting below 20% from the field. He's already got six here tonight. You saw them right there. Well, you can see the coaching coming into effect of St. Bonaventure because Cairo Luke played at Holy Cross. Banks obviously was at St. Peter's, got to the Elite Eight, but still the Mac is not the level of the Atlantic 10, not quite. Uh, you've got other guys. Flowers came from Hartford. Uh, so these guys are starting to learn how to play not only in Atlantic 10 at this level, but play in the Mark Schmidt system. And you could see it all growing right in front of our eyes, especially last week down in Richmond. You talk about a roster makeover. St. Bonaventure is the only Division I school that did not return a single point or minute from last year. They lost literally everybody who played for them last year. Four of them transferred to major conference schools. One player went pro. Four of them were 1,000-point scorers. Banks contested three. Well off the mark. Rebounded by Malachi Smith. Well, good job by Dayton on that possession, not allowing Benning that good low post position. Smith reverses direction. Hit the bottom of the backboard. Kamara, another rebound to follow. Well, the quickness now of the front line of Dayton is bothering St. Bonaventure a little bit up in the front. There you see a steal. What a block at the other end, though, to turn it away. It goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the Flyers. Kamara has been hot. He's got eight points and five rebounds. Well, Anthony Grant likes to do this once in a while. He'll change it up, and he'll go into the full press attack mode, and after that make, Bonaventure never really got organized. That was Chad, or excuse me, Anquan Hill on the block, a transfer from Fairleigh Dickinson. Blocking foul. That'll be the first on Flowers. That's an important piece of Dayton's defensive game plan, not allowing Chad Bitt, Benny Ned with his size. He loves to just to back you in down low and then just take a drop step to the rim. But so far, he has not been able to establish good low post position. And Teron Holmes out of the game right now, not in the lineup. Tipped into the backcourt with 12 on the shot clock. I thought Smith dribbled that off his foot. So did the crowd. Can't always be relied on for unbiased opinions, though. As Kamara missed the layup, and then Kamara picks up the foul. His first. There's no, there's no unbiased opinions here or at UD Arena. And <laughs> two of the best fans faces in the country. And it's a good job. And we said it earlier, St. Bonaventure's guards have to get in there. And that time, Banks was in there with the bigs fighting for the rebound. Kamara's having his way on the glass. He is. He's very active. I mean, he's, he's long, he's athletic, but he also combines it with real good power and a nose for the ball. Coach Schmidt talked about his second jump of he and Holmes. Jump and then jump again. So tough to deal with on the glass. Good closeout by the Flyers. Took away an open three and then a turnover. Mike Sheriff jumps. Feeds 
a three-pointer from the left wing and a foul will be called against St. Bonaventure. I believe it's going to be Anwar Malouk. Well, if you haven't seen Sharp Jumps play yet this year, you're for a treat. Just really heady basketball player, 6'8", handles the ball, terrific passer, very capable three-point shooter. Anthony Grant does a nice job of moving him around to different spots on the floor. He does a good job of moving without the ball, but also a very good ball handler for his size. He hails from Mongolia. He is the first Division I athlete from Mongolia. And of note, his father was the first ever Asian Harlem Globetrotter. They called him the Mongolian Shark. Kamara again forcing his way to the rim. And out of bounds to the Bonnies. Kamara's getting pretty good angles to power his way into the lane and get to the rim, but Bonnies is doing a nice job of walling up. Even He's with been very aggressive. Side. Really assertive has Kamara so far on the offensive end. This is Luke. He leads the Bonnies with six points as the slowing the scoring has slowed down dramatically for St. Bonaventure. They haven't scored since the last media timeout. Trying to change that was Jan Farrell. He'll go to the line. I like Jan Farrell a lot. A good looking freshman, 6'6. He just finds an angle in there. Throws his body right into Kamara. Second foul on Kamara. Big call there. So Kamara, who's been Dayton's best player so far, has two fouls now. Farrell to the line. Big day of college troops coming up at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific over on ESPN. A fantastic matchup in the West Coast Conference. The rivalry between Gonzaga and St. Mary's. That's a full day of college troops tonight, 10.30 on ESPN and the app. That guy in the second half of that one, that's always a, a must-see game. For once, I think St. Mary's might be favored. I mean, they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gonzaga this year. St. Mary's is very good. Randy Bennett, his teams rarely disappoint from season to season. Saw Coach Bennett won his, I believe, 500th game the other night. Going to win, I think, over San Francisco. Inside for Holmes. Look out. Well, that was kind of a misdirection by Dayton. They changed sides of the floor, but it was four out around one. And once they saw that Holmes had good low post position, they just threw right over the top, and the help side was way out on the perimeter. So the good news for St. Bonaventure was Kamara went out with two fouls. The bad news is they brought in a preseason first-team All-Atlantic 10 player to Ron Holmes to replace him. Holmes' first two of the game. Luke attacking the rim. Farrell a three. Tapped out to Banks. Step back three. Offensive rebound. Third opportunity. Barry Evans under the basket. Kicks it out for a Malouk three. And the fourth opportunity for St. Bonaventure is finally cleaned up by the Flyers. Elvis to the rim, lays it in. I love Kobe Elvis. He's the ability to change direction, but under control. He's lightning fast, but... Always under control and can finish at the rim with the bigs. Evans forcing his way to the rim, turned away. St. Bonaventure's gone off track a little bit offensively. Well, credit Dayton's defense. They're doing a really good job of pressuring, but not over pressuring, and they're doing they're closing out very quickly for the contest. Nearing the midway point of a quickly played first half. Down to six on the shot clock. Kobe Elvis one on one with Banks. Skip pass for the corner three. Halfway down and out, rebounded by Luke. And Holmes did a good job rolling to the rim, but they missed him in the lane. Luke sees Holmes there, kicks it out, and a foul. They start to click on the offensive end. And one thing they do, they're very precise with what they want in the half court. And when you throw it to the big fella, Deron Holmes, ESPN Plus. Such a proud tradition they have here. It's just an unbelievable tradition. And these fans came ready tonight. And you know, Dayton came ready as well. Right now, defensively, Dayton is, is using their length to, to bother St. Bonaventure, especially on the perimeter with high hands and good, quick, long contests. You can't talk Bonnie's basketball without talking about Bob Lanier, class of 70, who passed away last May. He was the number one pick in the NBA draft in 1970, a member of the Basketball Hall of Fame. 
Farrell contests the jumper. Evans tap is out of bounds to St. Bonaventure. Good job by Evans on the back side, but he's going to secure that with two hands, take his time, go right up to the rim. He was off balance with the tip. And on that possession, Anthony Grant came out of the timeout, Robert, and went to a 3-2 matchup zone for the first time tonight. Uh, he will continually, all night long, change defenses here and there just to keep you off balance. What a tremendous job Coach Grant has done at his alma mater. Three from the corner for Banks. St. Bonaventure continues to struggle shooting the ball. It's a feral three. It's good. Now that's the first possession in a while that St. Bonaventure was actually able to get their feet set and shoot a clean, get a clean look from the three-point line. Even Banks rushed that three from the corner because of the defense. Remember Kamara on the bench with two fouls for Dayton. He has eight points and five rebounds. They almost throw it out of bounds. 13 on the shot clock, nine minutes to go, first half. Elvis playing with a huge brace on his knee. Missed the tough turnaround jumper. Rebounded by Flowers, who's back in the game. Good job by the Bonnie. He's not allowing dribble penetration. Inside for Venning. Good skip for Luke. And the rebound, Kobe Brea. Good look by Chad Venning. The willing and able passer. Felt the double coming, so he looked opposite. Venning, a transfer from Morgan State. Nice dump down low to Holmes, who tried to dunk it, lost it on the way up, and was foul. Yeah, nice delivery by Kobe Elvis. And he's got one thing in mind. He dribble drives into the gap like that. He's not looking for a shot. And if you over help, he will find the open man. And that's what Holmes does so well. He just doesn't stand in one spot on the box. He reads the defense, finds a good, better passing angle if his man steps up and loses contact with him on the low box. He came into the day leading the nation in dunks with 60. Zach Eadie of Purdue is second. The consensus national player of the year so far. Chris Jackson Davis had a little to say about that earlier today yes, in did. Wilmington. <laughs> Those are House is rocking. One and one A right now. Holmes makes one out of two from the line. He is a 65% free throw shooter. The foul was on Jan Farrell. It's his second. And he goes out of the game. Benning spins. Rejected, but foul. Well, Chad Benning was not making this move early in the season because of the fact that he was carrying some extra weight he wasn't in a tremendous playing shape, but now he's got himself in good playing shape. He can not only make those moves, but he can stay on the floor for extended minutes. And Mark Schmidt's development of Chad Benning has been much needed because he's really their only big, big down low. 66% free throw shooter comes off a terrific game at Richmond. 17 points, six rebounds, two blocks. 8 out of 11 from the field. They swept a road trip at VCU and Richmond. First two road wins of the year. They were down there forever. <laughs> we asked Coach. They were there for six days. It didn't make any sense financially to charter back and forth. I said, what did you do down there for six days? He said, we did nothing. There's only so many times you can go to the tobacco company for a steak. I mean, <laughs> the kids are worried that they're going to get bored or a little stale, but they did a nice job on that trip. And now they... Good job defending. He's having some struggles on offense. Said he watched film. The kids went to the movies and the mall a couple times. A long stay in Richmond, but a fruitful one. Two on the shot clock. Down to one. Desperation three. Gets it up on the rim. And a foul over the back, I believe, on Amseal. Four-point lead for Dayton on the road here in Western New York. Seven and a half to go for down, and they will do the same thing on the way home tonight. They'll take an hour and a half bus ride back to Buffalo and fly home back to Dayton tonight before they play VCU on the road on Tuesday. What a huge game that will be also. Keep your brights on on that drive. <laughs> yeah. It's a little dark. It can be a little dark at times, but uh, it's not dark in here. It's warm, and it's hot. St. Bonaventure with the ball. They've trailed for most of the last 10 minutes or so of this game. But down by just four right now. As we said, they've missed 11 of their last 12 shots. High percentage. Look, 
for Chad Benning. Well, that time Benning did, did his work early, and Holmes got caught behind him. And if you get caught behind Benning, forget it. He's too big and wide to, to get around on the outside. No small feat to score on Zeron Holmes, who leads the Atlantic 10 in blocks. He got caught flat-footed for some reason on that one. Benning just backed him down. Benning has looked good so far, five points. Dayton is bogged down a bit on offense here. Pick and roll of Holmes in traffic, lost it. Flowers will run. Crowd ready to explode. Flowers transition, three is good! Well, Moses Flowers, it comes off his hand and it looks perfect, and that one was perfect. 30 second down Holmes, and coming in transition, no one picks up Moses Flowers. That's why Anthony Grant wanted to talk about it. Mm. Flowers, a 43% three-point shooter. Stop and pop there. He's got seven points to lead the Bonnies. Nine to one, an extended four and a half minute run for St. Bonaventure. This was with Kamara on the bench with two fouls for Dayton. All the way in, Holmes comes away with it and dunks it. Well, this was falling out of bounds. A miraculous job just to keep it inbounds and then find the open man. Kamara at the scorer's table, ready to check in at the next dead ball. Benning versus Holmes, skips it for Luke. Luke, foul. And this is coming right to you, Robert Lee, right from your living room to mine. And this is the extra, extra effort by Colby Elvis, diving to save his own loose ball, and nobody rotated back down from, for Bonnie's, and Holmes took advantage. Holmes with five points in the game for head coach Anthony Grant. Twelve on the shot clock here for St. Bonaventure. Getting back in the zone. Down to six. Anquan Hill. Nice feed for Venning. Reverse left up and in. Seven points. Oh, the change of direction, the change of the angle, change of the side of the rim by Venning adjusting as the shot blocker was looming and roaming in the neighborhood. Kamara back in for Dayton with eight points and five rebounds and two fouls. Offensive foul. Now Chad Venning's doing an excellent job of hedging on the pick and roll, then recovering to Holmes, and he's also doing a good job of catching and avoiding trouble from Holmes. And right now, Venning has just kind of taken a look at him guard the pick and roll with the high hedge, then finds a way to get back in. But Holmes, He's gets, around Holmes. Holmes gets called for riding him out. Good call. Chad Venning's listed at 6'10, 270, a third year sophomore from Brooklyn, first year at St. Bonaventure. He played at Morgan State last year, where he averaged seven points in about 14 minutes a game. Flowers well off the mark with the three, and it'll go over to Dayton. But Benning has stepped up and taken the challenge of going one-on-one -on -one with one of the best players in the league, Holmes. Well, he's got to hold his own because he's got Holmes and Kamara up front, and he's got to take them both on, really, especially on the glass because they're undersized. But he can certainly be a big, big factor, and he has been, especially defensively in the last few possessions. Elvis gets it back. Digging it out in the jump ball. Now Mark Schmidt is pacing the sidelines, but there's a smile inside that sweater over there because he's saying, my guys are battling. They're, they're answering the challenge of, that's, a, that's an easy one. Gives the guys a few extra seconds to, I don't know what the discussion was even about. It's pretty easy. St. Bonaventure trying to break a seven-game losing streak against Dayton. Luke being trapped in the backcourt. Three seconds to get it across. They do so, and they've got numbers. Flowers to three. He got it. Bonnie's was in trouble. They were unaware of the trap, the pressure. They weren't organized. Luke did a good job of backing up, surveying the situation. They got it to the middle, went opposite, and Flowers was wide open. Holmes rolling to the rim, lays it in and a foul to Ron Holmes. Chance for three. This is what 
Palms does. This is why he's such a problem on the short roll. He just elevates quickly. Pretty good body balance there. And Flowers looked like he was there. He might have been outside, inside of the restricted area that we couldn't see. The, the official did not point. Mark Schmidt does not like the explanation from Trey Stiles. Second foul on Flowers. Holmes does complete the three-point play. He's up to eight points. Coach Schmidt really complimented his motor. He said for a big guy, he plays with a tremendous motor, and that's not something you could say about all the big guys. Venning right the floor! Well, that time, St. Bonaventure was organized against the pressure. They spaced it out, went opposite again, and then dribble drove into the lane, and Venning is really effective at the rim. Chad Venning has nine points. Flowers has ten. Um, seal turned away by Flowers, goes to the floor, he traveled. Well, the extra passes, the defense, the confidence on glass. And that was a big issue early in this game. That, but Mark Schmidt's done a good job of having his team adjust, getting involved, getting his guards in, in there, not leaving Benning, Benning alone on an island to battle the rebounding of Dayton. You talked about that rebounding, 14 rebounds apiece. This is a Dayton team. It's the best team in the league in rebounding margin. I think St. Bonaventure would take a draw. Antoine Hill playing big minutes here. Hasn't been playing a whole lot of late. He is the NEC Rookie of the Year last year at Fairleigh Dickinson. And a turnover. Mark Schmidt is furious. Well, Benny do the... Drew the double down low and unexpectedly because he, he wasn't really in a scoring spot and seen him make some good passes tonight, but I think they got caught standing around watching him on the perimeter offensively. Robert Lee, the coach Tim Welsh, our entire ESPN crew from Olean, New York, about an hour and a half south of Buffalo. Dayton and St. Bonaventure. Dayton comes in 7-3 in the A-10 as the layup's off the mark. They're in second place. St. Bonaventure in fifth, just one game behind. Luke drives baseline, hangs in the air, hits the bottom of the backboard. Here come the Flyers on the run, four on three. Shot of jumps, left corner, three on the way. And Benning clears the glass. And that last triple drive, though, Luke drove the baseline. He got into kind of territory where he was uncomfortable, and he had banks on the backside on the drive and drift on the baseline, and he, he missed him in the corner. Benning scores again. Holmes is having major issues. He's trying to battle toe-to-toe -to -toe with muscle. He's got to use his length and his quickness to get around Venning down low and not allow him that position. Venning with 11 points right at a season average. Two on the shot clock. Smith misses it. Rebounded, though, by the Flyers' Kamara. Fresh 20. And Hill should have moved Kamara off that spot down low, but Kamara is really hard to block out. Guess who? Chad Venning sends it into the student section. Well, we talked about Venning's offense, but this part of his game is underrated. He's been battling... Holmes helping out on the pick and roll and resisting right. at the rim. Yes, <laughs> looks like somebody took a shot there, one of our camera folks. Venning, Larry, Larry uh, took the worst of that. Venning is fifth in the Atlantic 10 in blocks. One on the shot clock. Did not get it away. Shot clock violation. Well, Anthony Grant's not happy with Deron Holmes. Like, he must have better awareness out there on the floor. He kind of took his time down low like he had 15 seconds on the clock instead of two. They'll get Kamara out of the game with two fouls here in the final minute and change as Amseal comes in. Also checking in Kobe Brea. This is St. Bonaventure's biggest lead of the game. Five points. Dayton has not scored in three minutes. 
It'll stay with the Bonnies. Well, Mark Schmidt calling a special from the bench. And Anthony Grant, as we spoke about earlier, has been mixing and matches, matching his presses, his half-court defense. They're going to stay in man with 20 left on the clock. But they do a better job of getting around Venning. Chad Venning down in the low box. They're going to try to go to him again. One minute left to go. Bonnie still have their timeout. They're using to lose it in the first half if they choose to. Mark Schmidt's got his hands on his head. Luke, wild shot. Anquan Hill, the rebound. Three on the shot clock. Missed the putback. And coming away with it is Deron Holmes, and he's fouled. Very difficult. Hill, uh, Hill did the same thing that Evans did earlier in the game. He, he knifed his way in there because of his quickness, used his length to get the offensive rebound, but tried to tip it when he was falling down. You've got to secure that basketball with two hands, take your time, and go straight up. What a women's basketball triple header we have for you tomorrow afternoon on ESPN2 and the app. North Carolina scores off against Louisville in our first game at noon Eastern. And then LSU takes on Texas A&M. We cap the afternoon with a Big Ten matchup, Ohio State and Maryland. Two top ten teams as Holmes missed the front end of the one and one. He is not a good free throw shooter, 65%. St. Bonaventure will call a timeout. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. Bonnie's lead it by five. Guys, let's be honest. Buying open up the outside as well, and they've done a good job of adjusting to them some of the presses that Dayton's had. And he's got to get try to put some pressure on Chad Benning, maybe with Deron Holmes in the second half going into him, making Benning guard him one on one on a box. Benning has 11, Flowers with 10. Nice feed to Benning, leaves it up and in. Well, Benning is playing with great energy and. Tremendous shape. He's running the floor. He's moving his feet on defense. And right now, he's outplaying Deron Holmes. He looks like the best player on the court. He's got 13 points. His career high is 23. 10 seconds left. Almost a steal. Elvis has it for Dayton. Five seconds left. Elvis, crazy shot. Rebound tapped out to Brea with two. Shot at the buzzer. Holmes a three. St. Bonaventure's biggest lead of the game, seven points at the half. Well, Bonaventure came with their defense in this last 10 minutes of the first half, and they got it up on the glass, the dribbler, and they're not allowing the roll man, which is usually Holmes, any open space on the weak side. Venning made all six of his shots in the first half for the Bonnies, who shot 45%, held Dayton to 32% shooting. Dayton will start the second half with the ball in the road. Blue jerseys. And I believe the shot clock did not start. The second chance here to start the second half. Venning led the way with 13. Flowers had 10. Daryl Banks, St. Bonaventure's leading scorer at 15 a game, did not score in the first half. They're still up by seven. Kamara and Holmes each had eight for the Flyers. They just got to find a way to get easier shots. They're going right into their moneymaker down low, Kamara. He's fouled. He started the game very hot, picked up two fouls, went out of the game, never got back into rhythm. Well, he's got a huge advantage. The size, experience. He's being guarded by a freshman in Farrell down, down on the low box, and that time they went right into him. The foul is on Venning. It's his first. Kamara had eight points and five rebounds in about the first five minutes of the game. He's been held quiet since. And he misses the first free throw. And he comes out of the game. And then we have Holmes really down low, who's a threat. So Bonaventure really loaded up on Holmes. And did a good job on that high ball screen, both against Malachi Smith and Kobe Ellis. He misses Elvis. two. Kobe Elvis has got to get himself going in, in transition as well. He, he hurt St. Bonaventure early with the dribble drives into the gap. Look for him to try to do that a little bit coming out of the game. Elvis with only two points in that first half. St. Bonaventure in the home white jerseys. This is Chad Venning, one-on-one -on -one with Holmes. Extra pass. No one wants to shoot it. They'll reset with four on the shot clock. Venning, fade away. Rebounded by Kamara. Bonnie's never got organized in their zone offense. They switched to the 3-2, kind of confused St. Bonaventure.
Kamara rolling to the rim, lays it up and in. Yeah, real good offense by Dayton on that possession. That's the difference in having Kamara on the floor. You've got that second big. That time Holmes pulled Benning out to the perimeter. They ran the little side ball screen. Kamara, good vision, getting to the rim. Kamara, the lone team captain for Dayton, started his career at Georgia. Turned away at the rim, Flowers. Still 10 on the shot clock. Luke in amongst the trees. Flowers. Well short with a three. Rebounded by Holmes. So far, St. Bonaventure not getting those clean looks they were getting in the last 10 minutes of the first half. Holmes rolling to the rim and rocks the rim. Two-man game in the middle of the floor that time. Quick ball reversal, which is Dayton has been doing at the start of the second half, trying to open up the floor a little bit in the middle for Holmes. Super sophomore to Ron Holmes up to 10 points. And a foul. Ron Holmes, a solid first half, but Anthony Grant wants to get him and Kamara involved early. Well, they only shot 32% in the first half. They had a tough time getting clean looks. Assistant coach Ricardo Greer told us that teams are doubling, they're tripling Holmes. He's got to diversify his game, make some jump shots, and find some open guys out of the post. Flowers over Holmes. Venning the rebound. Venning puts it up and in. Venning rolled to the rim. He just held his position down there and barreled his way to the rim. Long skip pass. Attacking the rim. Down low. Holmes another dunk. Well, this is Dayton at its best. They're spacing the floor. They're skipping the basketball over the top. And then we said it earlier, Kobe Elvis was very, very effective earlier in this game. Dribble driving into the gap. Quick penetration and then the kickoff. A tough call on Kamara. That'll be his third foul, the nickel dimer. Well, this is Benning. Just kind of outpowering Kamara. And Benning. That's to help and gets no help on the backside on the drive by Elvis. So a huge call on Kamara, about 30 feet from the basket. Tumani Kamara has three fouls now, and they'll keep him in there. He body bumped the dribbler, and the freedom of movement, you can't put your hands on the dribbler on the perimeter. He's defending Farrell. Turnover. Holmes running the floor. And foul. It'll be caught on Moses Flowers. That's his third. Moses Flowers just forced the issue. With Chad Benning was not open. Flowers was doing a good job of kind of three quarters defending him on the box. In the first half, he got caught dead behind him on a couple occasions. He's made a good adjustment defensively and. He's a very aggressive offensively coming out of the gate in the second half. Holmes makes the first free throw. Tomorrow, after the NFL Pro Bowl games on ESPN and the app, we'll have the NBA with the Sixers at MSG to take on the Knicks. Six Eastern, three Pacific on ESPN and the app. Holmes has really struggled from the line. He makes two there and is up to 14 points. Well, Dayton's defense has tightened the screws here in the second half. St. Bonaventure's got to try to swing the ball, get into their dribble drive action, and then get it into Venning on the low box. Evans to Venning. Nine on the shot clock. Banks still yet to score. Rebounded by Kamara. He pulls it out by Elvis on the wing. Dayton looking to take the lead. Holmes gets to the low left block. One on one with Venning. Double team. Still 12 to shoot. And a foul. Barry Evans, his first. Well, Chad Venning doing a nice job here on the low box. Moving his feet. Holmes tries to take him off the drive, face up, and then tries to back him in. And just holds his ground. And then the double comes, and Holmes does a good job of identifying. Fresh 20 for the Flyers. Down to eight to shoot. Lob it down low for Holmes. Double team. 
across Kamara, lays it in and a foul. No, he traveled. He traveled before the score will send us to a timeout. St. Bonaventure led it by seven at the half. Lewis at seven and three. St. Bonaventure right behind in fifth place at six and four. These have been two of the best programs in the league over the last eight years. Atlantic 10 wins. Dayton first. VCU second. St. Bonaventure third. Well, the A-10 didn't have a great pre-conference resume, per se, or, or results. But a lot of the key teams had major injuries. Mm. And I think they're starting to round into form. And I would be surprised if... Dayton, St. Louis, VCU, maybe even this Bonnie's team makes mm. a rush to the finish line. VCU, huge win on the road at St. Louis last night. VCU currently in first place. Three on the shot clock. Venning in trouble to Farrell. Bangs the triple. Well, oh, that's patience personified. That's coming out of that timeout, Mark. Smith said, we're taking some quick shots. We've got to space the floor. Wait for Dayton to make a mistake. Seven points for Farrell, the freshman, who's been on a real tear of late. Seven to shoot. Floater from the right baseline is rebounded by Barry Evans. Job by St. Bonaventure taking away that dribble drive by Elvis. Luke, his scoop shot, and a fight for the rebound and a jump ball. The arrow will favor St. Bonaventure. Well, when your big guy has good vision, a good feel, and is a willing and able passer, this can be the result. And then he knew he was not in a scoring position down low. Dayton got caught just a little bit. Too much ball watching on the perimeter. In St. Bonaventure's two wins down in Richmond over the weekend. Farrell made nine out of 12 three-pointers. He'll shoot another one. He got it. Oh, Robert Lee, that's what you call pure. That's like that looked like Ray Allen. Just hold, hold the follow through. You know it's going through, hitting nothing but net. Jan Farrell, four-star recruit from Keystone Academy in nearby Erie, Pennsylvania, has 10 points. A steal. Venning's got it. Bonnies have matched their biggest lead of the game. Crowd ready to explode. A score could lead to a Dayton timeout. Luke zigzagging. Got the roll. Now those Riley center rims have been kind tonight to Luke. Almost a turnover. Well, Jan Farrell, we said he's got a pure stroke, and this is textbook. That is feet set, and they are doing a nice job of spacing the floor, kind of waiting for Dayton to take that extra half step into the lane and finding their open shooters on the perimeter. And down here, St. Bonaventure is doubling the post and kind of staying away from Malachi Smith because he's now a real threat from the perimeter. Bonnie's on an 8-0 run to open up their biggest lead of the game. Smith down the lane, lost it. It'll stay with the Flyers with 12 on the shot clock. And Dayton's doing a good job of throwing that out of the double team on the low box and reversing the floor to the open shooter, but say Bonaventure's doing an even better job of recovering off the trap and finding the open man on the outside for a closeout. Eight on the shot clock. Deflected. But still with Dayton with three to shoot. Not much going on this possession. Well, it's Bonaventure's defense now is taking an extra step up. Make a couple threes. Sometimes your defense goes up to another level. Three to shoot. Huge shot. Mustafa um, seal off the inbounds. Bonaventure trailed on the screen. They let him in a half step. They said a little pin down on that wing. That was a good play call from the bench by Anthony Grant with only three on the clock. Breaks that 8-0 run and pulls the Flyers within six. They've got Venning posted up on Holmes. Can't get it to him. Here's Farrell. Five on the shot clock. Down to three. Luke 
mid-range jumper. Well, again, the patience of St. Bonaventure. They really didn't force it into Benning. They wanted to get it into it. He was covered well by Holmes. They waited for Luke to make something happen on his own. Evans steals it. Barry Evans, one-on-one -on -one with Holmes to the rim. Lays it up and in. Anthony Grant wants a timeout. Tyrell Luke, but nothing's there. He makes something happen on his own. He's got his head to do to stem the tide and get back into this game. Well, they got to have to run some better offense. It seems like they're a little stagnant on the offensive end. The pressure of St. Bonaventure seems to be bothering them. Uh, when they get the golf ball going from side to side and get everyone involved. Now, Kamara not being out there on the floor. Well, he's back out there now. They have to try to run some things for him. Holmes, they're going to give Holmes a little bit of rest and use Kamara as an offensive facilitator. The three guards for Dayton have been quiet as Kobe Brea will shoot a three, and it's his first three points of the game. He has three, Smith with five, Elvis with only two. Oh, listen, they really miss R.J. Blakeney. He's their best kind of wing defender. And him not being here tonight, see, on the wing, guys have been able to make things happen. Men in good patience to finish. He's got 17. Well, that's just good offense. You know, that's a misdirection play, waiting for the defense to... It's driven up the lane and then over the top to Benny. Kamara attacks the rim, rejected by Venning. Kamara gets it back. Missed the putback. Luke runs it down in the corner. Kamara has been aggressive throughout, couldn't finish there. Farrell, rebounded by Kamara. It was a little quick. Mark Schmidt wanted to run some more offense. Kamara will shoot the three. Over the backboard, out of bounds. Well, Chad Benning is not slowing down at all. His conditioning has been exquisite. With it, just the ability defensively rebounding. You know, another big thing that many learned how to do is play long minutes without fouling. Now, he's fouled out of six basketball games this year. Tonight, he only has one foul playing against one of the better big guys, if not the best in the A-10. Bad turnover on the inbound. Stolen by Amseel. Almost stolen back. And a foul against Dayton. And Anthony Krantz is furious. I think he just got teed up. better watch it. He might get run out of here. I know he's hot. I think he's got a pretty good case here. I don't know how in the heck the officials called a foul on I'm seal. I'm seal on that loose ball. And I'm seal got, I'm seal got pushed. And Anthony Grant had a good angle at it. Now you see it here on the loose ball. I think it's just two guys going for the ball there. Two guys going for the ball. And Luke pushes Am seal to the ground. He's the one that takes the hurt. He gets the foul and his coach gets a tee. They'll send Daryl Banks to the line. He has not scored tonight. He's an 84% free throw shooter, so Mark Schmidt wants to give him the opportunity to see the ball go through the net. First two points of the game for Banks. Biggest lead of the game now for the Bonnies. I just hate to see it when you're players making the extra effort to get the loose ball. He gets knocked down and, and also gets called for the foul. And St. Bonaventure will get the ball. This is the only meeting of the season scheduled between these two teams. Benning going to work in the paint. Deflected. Luke's got it. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Luke lost it. He's fouled. Well, Kyrell Luke seems to be everywhere. I think there might be two of them out here tonight because just there's a loose ball, there's two blue, blue shirts around it, and he, somehow he squeezes in there and finds a way to retrieve it and get fouled. Um, Seal just picked up his fourth foul of the game as Deron Holmes will come in to replace him. Well, with Holmes out on that last possession, Mark Schmidt was trying to go into Benning, but they did a good job of supporting him down low. They couldn't find an open angle. They pop free on the three. Banks was fouled. 
Wow, three shot foul coming up. It's called on Kobe Brea. Well, Banks came off that little pin down on the baseline out of bounds. And Gabe was a little slow to react. What a women's basketball triple header we have for you tomorrow afternoon on ESPN2 and the app. North Carolina squares off against Louisville in our first game. It's at noon Eastern, then LSU and Texas A&M. We cap the afternoon with a top 10 matchup, Ohio State and Maryland. That's tomorrow, ESPN2 and the app. How about the Big Ten women? Five, five teams in the top 18, top 15 in the country. And Diamond a player Miller. for Iowa. And Caitlin Clark is special. Logo Diamond, range. Di Diamond Miller is tremendous for Maryland. Uh, Really great senior for the Terps. Three for three for Daryl Banks. Biggest lead of the game. 14 points coming up on the midway point of the second half. Tough pass down low. It's out of bounds to Dayton. Now Mark Schmidt it has his team ready in every facet of the game including defense and Benny oh, it's clearly off of Holmes the officials are half step off in the last few minutes Dayton will keep possession with six on the shot clock shot up jumps back in the game tough shot Malachi Smith is good yeah, that was a tough shot but that's much needed Smith has needs to give him a little bit of something offensively to match Kyrell Luke. Midway point of the second half. One second to get it across. Ten second violation. Turnover St. Bonaventure. Or did they call a timeout? I don't think so. I think it's a turnover. You could call the timeout and reset the 10 second clock. I don't think they got the timeout in time. It is a turnover. Well, Mark Schmidt was... Upset with his team on that play, I believe, because they again were kind of surprised caught off guard. They have to be ready for that trap. They will send it every few minutes, and Bonaventure wasn't organized with their press offense. Both teams come in on two game winning streaks. St. Bonaventure hasn't won three in a row since November. Evans taps it out of bounds. <laughs> Barry Evans got real good length and also the ability to defend on the perimeter and inside. Evans played at Putnam Science Academy in Connecticut, same prep school that produced a couple of recent Bonaventure stars, Kyle Lofton and Ashuna Shuni. Actually, head coach Mark Schmidt's oldest son coaches at Putnam Science. Smith a three. Venning clears the glass and a foul. Mm, it's caught against St. Bonaventure. Then he, then he was blocked out pretty well there. I think he down below, he got caught with a little tug on the arm. I think they said he hooked Holmes' arm as they were both elevating. That's a good call. Michael Lucky had the perfect angle on the interior. Dayton will keep possession. Top of the key three. Evans source for the rebound. That was Zimmy Wokeji on the shot. He's two out of ten from three-point range this season. Nine minutes to go. Bonnie's up by a dozen. Banks step back three. Has really struggled to find the range today. Banks 0 for 6 from the field and a jump ball. The aerial favor, Dayton. A good hustle by Malachi Smith and excellent defense on that possession by Dayton. You know, the problem with this Dayton's had is that St. Bonaventure, they're just getting better shots in the half court than Dayton is. And that man, again, is everywhere. Student section in a frenzy here. 12 point lead for the Bonnies. The 
There hasn't been a whole lot of flow in this game over the last few minutes. Brea, a strong take. Out of nowhere, they did a good job of clearing out the side. And Brea, showing that athleticism. Gliding to the rim. Full court press and a foul. Bit of a bailout there from St. Bonaventure again. Luke got caught with the trap. They're trapping him right in the middle of the floor. When that happens, Robert, you need to attack one of the trappers and not back up. Just go find an angle, use your quickness, and then have your head up. But the problem is that Bonnie's other players are running down the floor. They're unaware that the press is there. They've got to make sure they take a glance back over their shoulder and make themselves available in the middle of the floor against the pressure. It ends up being a foul on Malachi Smith, his second. It'll send Banks to the line for one and one. All five of his points from the line here in the second half. Banks was a star in St. Peter's Cinderella run in the NCAA tournament last year. Had 27 points in their shocking upset of Kentucky. Had five three-pointers in that game. He averaged about 14 a game in their four-game NCAA run. Beat Purdue, Murray State as well. Now he's played really good defense on Kobe El Elvis tonight. They've done a good job on him. And the scout report's kind of out on Banks. You've got to get up on his toes when he catches it. He's got to find other ways to generate offense for himself. Holmes wide open will rock the rim again. That's that side ball screen where they've got the backside cleared out. And right now Dayton's going to go to that well until St. Bonaventure makes an adjustment. Banks breaks the pressure himself. And the Bonnies will set up the offense with under eight minutes to go and a 10 point lead. Flower is a three. It's good. First points of the second half for Moses Flowers. He is 13. Holmes, great position inside. Holmes spins and is foul. If they try to hang in, they've been going to that side pick and roll, and Holmes is trying to be a little bit roster. And these guys, these guys just met each other over the summer. And they're playing this effectively tonight against a really good Dayton team. When you have such a new roster, is it is it just understood that it's going to take a while for the team to gel? Well, it's not just such a new roster. It's a completely mm -hmm. right roster where no points, no players return. And it's just beyond me that you could even compete at this level this early in the season, even though we're in February. But... You know, it, this league is a great league. The new hires over the summer, Fran Dumphy, Frank Martin, Archie Miller, Chris Caputo. It's only going to get better as, mm. as we move forward. A lot of depth in the A-10 this year. St. Bonaventure was picked 10th in the preseason poll, currently in fifth place and looking to make a move up here tonight. Dayton has the best net ranking in the league, 72 coming into today, VCU at 79. Flowers, tough shot. Rebounded by Malachi Smith. One final thought on that. The Atlantic 10 has had multiple bids to the tournament 16 years in a row. Turnover. And Malachi Smith just kind of forcing the issue. A little bit of a frustration pass. And that possession against Cairo Luke. But Luke's everywhere. The long arms are active on the defensive end. And then the ball handling, the ability to create for himself and others on this end. Luke dominating this possession with five on the shot clock. Jan Farrell back in the game. Tough shot. He's fouled. That'll be the fourth on Kamara. Here in the dribble drive, just the ability by Farrell to create. And you got to close out on him hard because he's a very good three point shooter. There was nothing there, but he kind of twisted and found Kamara's body in his way. Farrell, 63% free throw shooter, a three-time Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Week. Coming up at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific over on ESPN. Great West Coast Conference rivalry between Gonzaga and St. Mary's. Perennially the top two teams in that league. Caps a full day of hoops. Duke Carolina today. Fantastic part of the college basketball season.
Gonzaga's not getting the hype, and rightfully so. They're not as good as they have been in the past five years, but something tells me they're gonna be there in March. St. Mary's really the only team in the league that regularly challenges Gonzaga. Brea missed the three. Venning swoops in for the rebound, and he's fouled. So Dayton, that is now their ninth team foul of the half, and it'll put Venning at the line for one and one. Malachi Smith, his third. Well, that's the renewed commitment to conditioning by Chad Venning. Just not just getting rebounds at the rim, but going and getting the ball out of his area. Benning, 66% free throw shooter for the season. Eight out of nine from the field tonight. Fantastic game for Benning, the transfer from Morgan State. Missed the free throw, however. And the rebound to the Flyers. Dayton needs buckets, and perhaps even more so, they need some stops. Under six minutes to go. Malachi Smith has been quiet. Inside for Kamara. Skips it to Brea. Good closeout by Flowers. Brea knocks it down. Brea used that length over the top. We saw him. And I think there was a foul separate from the shot. Well, was good patience by Dayton on that possession. Brea, you see him at 6'6", just shoots right over the top. And it's also a foul on Farrell, so Dayton will keep the possession. That's only the sixth foul against St. Bonaventure, so a chance for a four or five point possession. Possible huge momentum swing here for the Flyers to get back into the game. And a turnover. Well, Dayton's uncomfortable in the half court because of the pressure on the perimeter. And Daryl Banks is an elite defender. He is just up into the Dayton guards. Problems getting it in. Timeout. Bonaventure leads it by 10 with five and a half minutes to go. Well, that time they saw the press. It was right in front of them up here when I was at Florida State. And it seemed weird going into a ball game and it's 72 <laughs> degrees out. It's supposed to be. But this is what it's all about. A sellout crowd, 4,850 here at the Riley Center. And they've been treated to a good performance so far from their hometown bunnies. Problems getting in it again, almost a steal. It's on the floor. It is tied up, a jump ball. The arrow will favor St. Bonaventure. Well, Bonaventure's got to get some misdirection going. Get somebody flashing up and then somebody going. And there's no clear lanes to pass the ball right now for St. Bonaventure against this pressure. See, everybody's in the backcourt. Got ten guys in one area. We got to send somebody deep. Problems again. Now Luke in the backcourt gets through a double, and we'll pull it out and set up the offense. Well, that wasn't pretty, but that was just talent by Luke that broke that pressure. Used his quickness to get it safely across the timeline. Now 12 on the shot clock. Banks in the lane. Well short. Rebounded by Kamara. Really short arm. Great move. Got balance. Came off two feet, but just couldn't finish. Elvis has been silent. He has only two points. Averages ten and a half a game. And a foul. And this is going to put Dayton at the free throw line. It's caught on Moses Flowers. It's his fourth. It'll put Deron Holmes at the line. Six out of eight tonight. Holmes has come alive at points in the second half. They can't forget who he is. Keep putting pressure on Benning down in the low box. And the thing about Holmes is he does catch it down there. He'll pass it back out if he feels the trap coming. And that will open up stuff on the perimeter for Dayton. He attempts over six free throws a game, so it really behooves him to be a good free throw shooter. He's now seven out of nine. On the season, he came in at 
Made one out of two, rebounded by Venning. 19 points for Holmes. They tried to run the trap, and Luke, he evades it. Well, he's a one-man press breaker himself. That time they never tried to run and jump a little bit, but they didn't get organized early enough. Bonnie's looking to execute down the stretch and win their third in a row. Banks the three. It's good! And a foul! Chance for four! Dave's done a good job of getting out on the three-point shooters, uh, getting out into Banks' feet. And that time they trip him on the way down. I don't know about this one, but uh, Banks. Well, they called him for the trip down below, but Banks clearly kicked his feet out. Which they've really tried to legislate out of the pro game. But still called there as Banks missed the free throw. He's got 10 points. That's a play on to me. Dayton down a dozen still. Coming up on four minutes to go. Dayton has struggled to score tonight. They fumble it away. Well, that was just so good from a defensive standpoint. Everybody five as one. They move on the pass, not on the catch. They ready to help each other and help the helper. Foul on shot of jumps. Well, Daryl Banks defensively has been there all night. Not the offense has kind of sputtered, but you cannot pull on the offensive end, posting up, making the extra pass, really defending well and rebounding, and also. He's played 33 mm. out of the 36 minutes right. tonight. Just tremendous conditioning without getting into deep foul trouble. He's got soft hands. He does. And, you know, you go from Morgan State to the Atlantic 10, it's mm. a huge jump. Not, not so much in style of play, but in the type of bigs you're going to play against. And you don't even play against anybody like on home when he's at Morgan State. So he's getting used to playing against bigger players and also staying in shape without foul. Holmes, not a huge three-point shooter. Shot of jumps. Rebounded by Luke. St. Bonaventure trying to close it out and win their third win game in a row. We're in Olean, New York, the Riley Center. Robert Lee, Tim Walsh, our entire ESPN crew with you about an hour and a half south of Buffalo. The Bonnies up 14. They've dominated the second half and look to tie Dayton in the Atlantic 10 standings. Banks steps into a three. Gets his own rebound and scores! Now, when it rains, it pours for Dayton tonight. They just have not been able to get into any type of rhythm, and nobody blocked out. The bigs blocked out, but they, no one went and got the ball, and Banks said, I'm going to go get that. Those are easy twos. He knew the shot was off before anybody else did. Brea off the mark with the three, shot off jumps, the rebound. Down the lane, Elvis scoops it up and in. Four points for Kobe Elvis. He's been very quiet. It's, he's been quiet because Daryl Banks has been up in him. Quickness, using length. Now Mark Smith's going to go into his stuff. They're going to run some clock. Elvis missed 12 games with a knee injury, but since he came back, He's been shooting it very well and averaging about 11 a game over the last four. Only four points here tonight. Ronnie's looking to put an exclamation point on it. It's blocked. Running the floor, Holmes attacks the rim and scores. 21 for Holmes. Well, I would imagine Bonnie's gets even more of a motion offense on this possession. They kind of waited a little bit too long in the last one. They didn't get a good look. Bonnie's half timeouts. Banks dribbles through about four defenders. Two minutes to go. Well, again, it has been pr pretty attacking that pressure, but with Banks and Luke, they find a way. What's the ceiling for this Bonnie's team? You know, Mark Schmidt is nothing short of a miracle worker in, in my eyes at this point. And, you know, look at Banks here. This is one of the reasons they took him from St. Peter's. He's a rock-solid defender and just toughness. Knows how to find a way when there is no way. 
Mark Schmidt, the winningest coach in St. Bonaventure history, looking to add another to his total win number 281. Shot off jumps. Blocked by Banks from behind off of shot off jumps and. Well, we saw Daryl Banks do this a lot in the edge. Did not was not involved in possession of the basketball. But not the smartest play in the world, probably when you have a 12-point lead. You the threat <laughs> of fouling the three-point shooter was there, but the extra effort was beneficial. A steal. Elvis has got it. Elvis down the lane. Missed the scoop shot. And out of bounds off of Banks, but with a minute 20 to go, Dayton still a flickering pulse. You can bet Coach Schmidt's going to be working on the press break in well, practice. The length of Dayton is bothering St. Bonaventure with the pressure. They have trouble finding open men because Dayton's really up pressuring and also doing a good job of quick trapping in the corner. And the last thing you want to do if you're St. Bonaventure is foul. It's the worst case scenario to put Dayton at the line. Flowers just fouled out of the game, and so with the clock stopped, Dayton a chance to score from the strike. Flowers fouls out with 13 points, 10 of them in the first half. Now Moses Flowers is a big, big reason that St. Bonaventure jumped out to a lead at the end of the first half. He made some open threes, gets out in transition. Since he's been inserted in the starting lineup, it's been nothing but good things happening for St. Bonaventure. And also, I like the move because of the fact that Barry Evans now coming in off the bench gives him kind of that six-man spark and a different look. You know, they go with the three guards to start, but then they bring in Evans, kind of that long, athletic wing who can make shots off the bench, and it's really been beneficial for St. Bonaventure. Brea has only attempted two free throws this season. He's made all three of them. And if nothing else, it gives Dayton a reason to keep pressing and try to cause another turnover. Nine points for Brea, all in the second half. Darrell needs to run the baseline here to get a better angle. Stationary over there, he's allowed to run the baseline and he's not. Banks dribbling through traffic. Banks a very good free throw shooter and now St. Bonaventure will run time off the clock. Take it underneath one minute to go. Sellout crowd of 4,850 has been roaring all night, and they've really affected this game. Looking for the exclamation point here. Kyrell Luke with three on the shot clock to the basket. Rejected. Dayton's got it with 45 seconds to go, down by 10. Need threes, need them quick. Brea rises for three, well short. And Banks. The rebound, there's about a seven second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. They will foul. Kobe Bray, or Kobe Elvis, I should say. The second. Well, Mark Schmidt, when we asked him about building a whole new team from zero, he said, you know what? It's been challenging, but it's been fun. Yep. And it's hard to, in this day and age of the portal and everything else that, go, that we have going on in the NIL, it's hard to build a program like Mark Schmidt has done over a long period of time here, building a program and keeping it, sustaining it at a high level. Now you have to build a team. Yep. Every year. And sometimes you have to rebuild it every year. Roster retention such yeah. a huge factor now. But it's also amazing that how one and then two road wins can just turn your season around confidence-wise. From the corner, Elvis. Rebound, follow jam by Kamara. Let's go, Anthony, get up, let's go! Dayton credit there. Continuing to fight. Should be the final possession of the game here as the shot clock is off. Oh, that was a ball handler right there in Kyle Luke, but a, a complete team effort tonight by St. Bonaventure from Luke to Flowers to Banks, and then the big guy, Chad Benning, was the big difference for St. Bonaventure. This frenzy crowd at the Riley Center.
got what they wanted tonight. St. Bonaventure wins at 68-59. Let's take a look at the updated standings. With the win, St. Bonaventure has now tied.